They are in Birdsville, about 1,600 kilometres west of Brisbane. We are out as far west as you can go in this part of Queensland um, before you hit the Simpson Desert. Now, while we're here, I thought it would be a great place to talk about what's happening behind me here. And that is what's something that we call the Great Artesian Basin. Now, what is the Great Artesian Basin? Well, it's the largest underground water basin and underground water supply in the world. In fact, it's so large that it covers about 22% of the land mass of Australia. It's enormous and it holds an absolutely untapped vast amount of water in it. And it's also the lifeblood for many communities out here. It's how they get their water supply, it's how they get their power, it's how the whole town functions. And without having these bores, these little towns simply would not exist. Now, this water's coming out from underground at close to about 100 degrees Celsius. And as you can see behind me, it's, bo it's boiling out here and steaming up into the atmosphere around. It's an absolutely amazing sight to see while you're here. Now, the water that's coming out of here also is several million years old, if you would believe it. The Great Artesian Basin actually formed about 100 million years ago, when the Australian landmass was a lot lower and sea levels were a lot higher. And all of this area that now encompasses the Great Artesian Basin was actually covered by an inland sea. Now, it was only a couple of metres deep, but what happened is over time, that inland sea created a very hard bottom to the ground. So the base of the Great Artesian Basin is a large, large layer of sandstone that runs across the entire basin. And what happens over time and over those millions of years is that water on the surface has gathered and then has seeped down in what we call recharge zones. And they've actually filled up the ground underneath the basin. Now, hopefully I can give you a bit of a practical demonstration of how that works. And I've set up a little bit of a kind of a sixth grade science experiment to show you what it looks like in practice. So let's have a look at how this works in practice. Now, uh, the Great Artesian Basin is an enormous area of underground water storage in places up to three kilometers deep. Now, as I mentioned before, the sandstone at the bottom of it, so I want you to picture the alfoil here as the sandstone. It's an impenetrable layer that the water can't get through. However, over the hundreds of thousands and millions of years that the, ba the basin has been here, a sediment layer of dirt, sand, rocks, you know, all the country that we can see around us has built up over the top of this sandstone. And that's what the water filters down to, gets trapped underneath um, and forms part of the basin. So hopefully, if this works properly, what we can do with this little experiment here is I'm going to pour some water in the side of our little experiment here. So that's going to simulate a recharge zone in the Great Artesian Basin. And very much like today, when water falls in these recharge zones, it's where it sinks into and it seeps underneath and fills up the basin. So we're going to pour just a tiny bit of water here into the side of our basin. Okay, so we've just simulated some rain. Now, obviously, what we're showing you here is massively sped up. This process of filling up the basin takes millions of years for the water to make its way all the way down into the basin. But what should happen is if we keep, if we keep just gently topping up this recharge zone, There's some water slip there we go just down the bottom there we can see that water starting to slip around the front of that alfoil yet if we look on top we've still got dry soil so that there that's exactly how the great artesian basin works and the best thing is that water is now locked underground it's not going to evaporate it's not going to go anywhere it's stored inside the basin and then it can be accessed later on at all these little towns and pumped up out of the ground for a whole bunch of different purposes.
Now they reckon that there's about 20 million million litres of water in a great artesian basin. Now that is a staggering figure because if you were to take all of that water, pump it all out and spread it evenly across all of the land masses of the planet, so every single continent, all the land masses, there would be so much water that every piece of land on Earth would be covered in about half a metre of water. So you can get an 